Hi everyone, thanks for watching the JB Arts YouTube channel. Today we're doing plaster gauze masks, taking plaster, putting it onto our mask template. Today I want to do some goblins, should be lots of fun. Uh, looking for sort of playful, in the end, kind of, kind of turns out a little bit uh, on the scary side, but that's okay. There's a second one as well for you that is uh, sort of like an octopus man, turned out pretty cool. This is me drawing on the mask first, I want sort of a large mouth, big eye sockets, uh, sort of roundish type teeth. Here's the bandages, dipping it in water and shaping it into the shape that I want. Pressing out a bit of the moisture and smoothing it out as I go helps to strengthen it up a lot. Notice how I wipe the bandage off on the side of my cup every single time I dip. That's why it, do it doesn't become oversaturated and make a big mess or uh, over soak the, the paper template. There we go, my teeth are nearly done. The lips that I want for my goblin are fairly thin, so I'm just going to sculpt them like I did the teeth, but in long stretches. If I want areas to be uh, thicker, I can put in a lot of different materials like, oh, plastic bags, packaging peanuts, crumpled up paper. Like here I'm doing the chin by crumpling up paper and putting more gauze on top of it. Usually two coats is a good way to go. Once it gets covered, you can see that I still wanted the chimney a bit bigger, so I put on some more paper and put on some more bandages. And this way you're not wasting material with large globs of plaster gauze. You can just pack in paper instead. Any kind of recycling will do. So here, I'm sort of placing out bigger chunks. I just set one piece on to keep it where I want it, and then lay other pieces on top. There we go. The shape of that face is starting to come out quite nicely. Do the other side so it's symmetrical. Keep on going. Once I finish the cheeks, I'm going to move on to the forehead. Now I want sort of defined brows. If you make your eyes with a, a deep shadow, your character will look a lot more sort of sinister. If you give your character sort of uh, happy eyebrows, you know, they're sort of facing in an upward direction towards the middle, then your character's got a lot more inviting or uh, curious, um, kind, or inviting. If you make them sort of angled in, then they get a lot more angry. With all of the plaster embellishments on, I can then start to paint. So I'm trying to paint into all of the deepest areas first, into sort of every little crevice, and then the details come after. So I've got sort of a deep red in the mouth. And now I'm gonna start priming with orange. This is just going to be my base color. I'm going to do sort of a pinky kind of color as the the final coat, but I like the warmness of the orange and it's going to naturally peer through my pink and look fantastic when it's done. At this point I'm putting the paint on quite thickly because the paint itself is actually going to help protect the plaster. All of the paint is going to seal everything in, fill in each crack, and help hold it together better. So I don't want to skimp on this part. I don't really want to see a lot of white spots. Even on this mask, if you want something white, you paint it white. You don't just leave it white. And that makes a big difference to sort of even how long you're going to have the mask. It'll be a lot more durable in the future if it's all painted together. As I'm coming to the end of the orange, I'm going to start working on the white details. Try and lighten some things up especially around the eyes, touching up the teeth where I'm, I sort of overpainted in my red. And that is going to make the character again look more friendly, a little less sinister, a little more playful is what I'm going for. So you can see here with the eyes lightening it up makes the character look a, a little more friendly or jolly, I guess. I rounded the teeth rather than sort of bringing them to a sharp point again, make it more friendly. Now I'm putting on my pink second coat. And imagine if I painted the entire character blue first, how the pink on top of it would look much darker. Well here, with the bright orange underneath, the pink is a lot more inviting. Again, making for a friendlier character. And next is to put the final details in, going through again with my white, cleaning up, refining my lines. You can still see some orange peeking through in places, I, I thought that gave it a nice color variety, made the character more interesting. 
yeah, overall I really like this one. So as a sealer, you can just use more acrylic medium for something like this. More than likely it's not going to be weathered, especially being a paper product. So just go ahead and put a sealer on of a, a polymer medium or a gel medium. Both of those would work really well. You can choose an either matte or glossy finish, whatever you prefer. Even sometimes a mixture of both, you could make the teeth all glossy and then do the rest in a matte finish. That would look really nice. If this mask is finished, let's get on to the next one. First, here's some quick examples of other different masks that we've done. Some of them were in classes. Some of them were just for fun or as examples. Some of them were made with a different template, but they're all done with plaster gauze. And then they have different parts to sort of fill them in or embellish them. Almost all of them use paper or packaging peanuts, that sort of thing. Oh, there's the next one you're going to see. All right, for mask number two, we're using the same template, but I want to really sort of hit home how you pack on extra things to get on extra texture or volume or shape, so that sort of thing. Now to hold your paper, you can see where I'm holding it, but you could always use masking tape just to keep it in place until you get, or as you get your bandages on. It is a little bit harder to hold it, but as you see, it works just fine. Once you get that first layer on, it all seems to hold together nicely. You can always put more bandages on to hold it in place, or even put more paper on in places where it's a little bit, I don't know, misshapen, or you, you really want to start building up other areas. Shaping the nose, you can see where I sort of pack it in as I'm working with it. Once the gauze goes on and it's a bit damp, the paper is a little bit more flexible and still likes to hold its shape. Here I want a gigantic nose. So I'm just about to start a harder part where I wrap the gauze around twisted paper. And this sort of gives me the tentacle shape. Now you want to put these parts on right away. You don't want to give it a chance to dry. You don't want to make all of your tentacles first and then try and stick them on. The plaster gauze sticks better to wet plaster gauze, so you want to put a bit on and then stick them on. All right, you can see I'm laying on strips to sort of blend the two pieces together. I've done them all different lengths to make them a bit more interesting. I put them up the side as well. I'm also changing the shape of the mask a bit. So you can certainly cut off chunks. That's one of the advantages to working with sort of a paper mask. That defines the cheekbones a little bit and has the tentacles sort of coming out the side. That definitely makes a more interesting mask, I think. You could consider this sort of the next step above the first mask. This one here is a, a little bit more advanced. I really want those cheekbones to stick out, just sort of below the temple there. That helps sort of break up the round shape. It looks a lot less human when you put those parts on, and that's sort of what I want. Some sort of underwater sea creature tentacle thing. I'm even changing the shape of the eyes. You can see where I'm sort of cutting out the eye socket to go in a bit different direction. I absolutely love the look of this one. Now here on the head, I'm just patching in a few spots where I didn't think it stuck out quite as much as the other side, just in an effort to make it a bit more symmetrical. And probably just me being picky. The sculpture part of the mask is just coming to a close here. Next, I'm going to start painting it. I'm not sure why I filmed the painting part different, but it's, also, it's a little bit stretched and distorted. So I did sort of do like a, a bit of a pink color in, a bit of blue color, just to give it a bit of a variety of color again. One color, boring. You at least want to put in two to three colors to make it more interesting. Once again, I'm just putting in sort of a, a bit of a base layer, get all of the white covered in. I have to turn this particular mask you know, on its side 
upside down to try and get into every little place, every little crevice. It's quite the textured mask, this one. All right, folks, we're coming to the end of our video. I just wanted to say thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, share any way that you can. It all helps out the channel, uh, helps us uh, keep doing these kind of videos. If you really like what we do, um, think about getting a kit, uh, giving it a try yourself. Um, thanks very much for watching. Have a wonderful day.